Okay, so for legal analysis and writing, uh, the important thing to notice about this, I, I won't discuss much of the reading, um, although we did do a ton of reading, but the important thing to note about legal writing is that legal writing is mostly based off of a skill rather than off of a subject. Yeah, so legal writing is based off of mostly a skill rather than a subject. So, for example, uh, you want to focus mostly on your client and what is going to benefit your client. When you are preparing your case, there are many different principles that one that one principle can go to. However, learning to write like an, a lawyer and read like a lawyer is different than learning and reading how to read and write like a law school student. Lawyers are active readers. They read unedited cases focusing on what's going to benefit their clients. If they are reading cases just to read them, uh, it, it would be a little weird just because they their job is to look at the law, the rule of law, and see what's going to apply to their clients. So this process that we talked about was really how you prepare to do a predictive analysis. And the predictive analysis is when you take both sides of an argument and try and make a prediction based off of a client. So, for example, say your client comes to you with a case, uh, they're being accused of assault, and they they want you to defend them in some way. So, well, what are you going to do? The first thing that you want to do is look up the rule of law for assault, and then you're going to compare that to the facts of your client's case. Well, what are, what are the rules? How does it relate to your client? And then what are the associated cases? What are the cases still with assault? And how are those cases similar? And where are they different? And use that comparison to say, okay, here's what I think a court is likely to rule based off of this. And you would draft this into a memo, and you would send that to uh, your superiors or uh, quite possibly to the client themselves, saying, here's my prediction of what will happen. And it's only a prediction. It's not a statement of fact and should not be the expected outcome of the case. It's just a prediction. That's it. And the client needs to make sure that they know that. Otherwise, there could be some ethical concerns that arise. But... Let's just go over the structure of this legal mem memo, which is what we're going to have to write later on in the semester. Uh, there are five parts of it. Uh, first is the heading, which states who the memo is to, and it tells them what the purpose of the memo is. You have the questions, which is the issue, the legal problems that the client wants to be solved. You have a short answer, which is just a summary of your conclusion. You have the facts. Uh, sharing the background of your client's case, and then you provide an analysis. And that's what a legal memo kind of falls under the thing of. And there's a whole lot of steps as far as writing a legal memo goes, from pre-drafting to making sure you do your discussion first and how to write a discussion, such as uh, using... Uh, uh, writing in global rules and then issue rules and then issue explanations and then uh, issue summaries, uh, all those kind of things uh, followed this process of IRAC, which is issue, uh, rule, analysis, and conclusion. And that's really how we're going to be focusing on doing our legal writing. Uh, we're going to learn more about that. Uh, but in the meantime, most of it is pretty, pretty common sense kind of things. In my, in my opinion, it's different than anything that we've done for sure. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward in the sense of we need to make sure that we are predicting, uh, looking at it objectively, 
and using that analysis uh, to provide competent information for our clients. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Law Schoolers. Before I let you go, there are four things I want to say. The first thing is if you enjoyed these episodes and if you enjoyed the website, I would invite you to go and join Law Schoolers Pro. And you can do that by going to lawschoolers.com slash join. It's a way for you to support us, but there's also a lot of features there that I think you will enjoy. Second thing is that nearly all of our episodes are unedited. The only ones that aren't are pre-law materials. And the reason for that is so you can actually see the legal material in its raw form as I'm learning it as well. The third thing is that the information contained in these episodes are specifically only for educational purposes. They're not to be used as legal advice. And with that, the fourth thing is if it is used as legal advice, we are not liable. That is, law schoolers is not liable for any legal outcomes. Thank you again for enjoying the show. Have a good one.